So good evening, everyone, and thank you so much uh, for joining in this School Reopening Town Hall Forum. I am Mike Caden, Superintendent of the Clyde Savannah Central School District. And before I get to sharing the overarching details of our reopening plan, I just want to explain the nature of the forum style presentation using Zoom. I'm going to spend the first part of the meeting sharing a lot of general information. Uh, please note that due to the limited time that we have together, I will not be going into the fine details of the plan. I know that many of you will still have some questions uh, about what I will be sharing tonight. I'm assuming that many of those questions will be answered for you during my share out. And I wanna thank those of you that have submitted questions beforehand as I uh, most likely will be addressing those during my presentation as well. Uh, with that said, uh, more specific detailed information will be included in the written plan that will be posted to the district website this Friday. Um, so I'm gonna just start with sharing with all of you that I will never forget the date March 13th, 2020, which happened to be Friday the 13th, of course. That was the last day that we had students on campus for what we will all remember to be a normal, traditional day of school. We received the governor's order that all New York State schools would be closing for the rest of the school year and that by Wednesday of that upcoming week, July 18th, we'd have to implement a fully virtual schooling model, including providing meals, a learning plan with adequate technology, connectivity, and materials for all students. And as you know, we did the best we could under those circumstances and with the very limited time we had to pull that off. Was it perfect? Not by any means. Did we try to adjust along the way and take note of improvements that could be made if we were finding ourselves in a similar situation in the future? Of course. Did I hope and pray that we would not have to be in the same situation? You better believe it. So I wanna just say, uh, but from the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank our entire school community, our families, our community partners, our students, uh, for all the patience, flexibility, and teamwork uh, that you've demonstrated from March uh, on to this point uh, in supporting our school district and supporting our teachers and as, as they worked so incredibly hard uh, in all of our departments to, to support students and families during this unprecedented, unprecedented time. Um, so let's fast forward to today, July 28, 2020. I'm now sharing with you uh, and I would never have thought in my wildest dreams sharing a plan of what a reopening school would look like coming this fall. First off, please note that every district is unique and that reopening plans are specific to the needs of each district. What Lyons might be doing could be drastically different from what Wayne Central might be doing or Williamson or what we're planning on doing in Clyde Savannah. So please understand that we are all unique. We all have unique needs of our community. Second, please know that these plans have been developed with a lot of thought and time from various stakeholders. Our district reopening committee was comprised of over 40 participants in person. I wanna personally thank everyone who was involved in that important work. Um, so I'm gonna just start off and get to our general planning. Uh, our goal was and still is to be able to maximize contact time with students under the current State Department of Health and Education Department guidelines. We had to work with three scenarios, an in-person model, a hybrid model, a remote model. The in-person model would be that every student attends every day for a full day, uh, and we would be able to um, follow the guidelines of social distancing and all the safety measures. A hybrid model would be uh, a, perhaps a, uh, an alternative schedule uh, of in-person and remote learning uh, in order to meet our social distancing guidelines. Or, or a fully remote model uh, where everyone will be, re will be learning uh, virtually. Um, at this point in time, uh, Clyde Savannah Central School District will be implementing the hybrid model due to the current social distancing guidelines, which have been compounded by transportation challenges due to social distancing as well. Transportation really has been the biggest challenge uh, for our, our school and many districts uh, in regard to their opening plan. Normally, we're able to transport uh, on any given, any given day up to 60 students on a bus. Uh, we will not be able to do that to meet our guidelines. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the social distancing on buses in a little bit, uh, but please understand that we will only be able to transport 11 to 12 students maximum on a bus. So the general schedule for elementary school, a lot of folks have been wondering, you know, when is elementary gonna start? We're gonna start with elementary. The elementary school day 
Uh, we'll begin at approximately 8 o'clock p.m. or 8, sorry, a.m. So between 8 and 8.30 and end at approximately 12 or 12.30 p.m. We're just working out the final details on that as it will be contingent upon transportation. But the general idea is that it will be about a four hour day of instruction. It'll be a shortened day. Um, and that does take into consideration the needs that we'll have for transporting with uh, pick up and drop off for all of our buildings. Uh, all students uh, will be able to attend in person, in person instruction for the shortened day following the social distancing guidelines of six feet apart in classrooms. Uh, we are able to do this by implementing student cohort and teacher rotational scheduling, as well as maximizing all available space in the building. Uh, there is still a possibility that fifth grade students might have to use classrooms at the middle school. However, Mrs. Lum and Mrs. Kelsey are really working hard to keep those fifth graders in that building. You know, one of the nice things about being a small district and, and not having, you know, thousands of kids is that we really were able to utilize our facilities uh, to be able to, to bring all, uh, all of our kids in, at least at the, at the elementary school. There are many districts that cannot do that and that are really struggling to be able to have in-person learning uh, that to that degree. So uh, we're, we're happy in this case that our numbers are uh, low enough to be able to do that. The middle school, high school general schedule will be as follows. And again, due to the social distancing guidelines and available space that we have at this building, uh, we will need to split the grade levels in half and deliver in-person instruction every other day. To start off, we will be using a five period, 60 minute block schedule. Uh, students will be receiving their instruction in four core subjects and one encore subject every other day. On the opposite days, students would engage virtually in their encore or elective classes. And those encore elective classes will have a set schedule that students would be expected to follow daily in a synchronous format. And our recommendation is that we will be recording both the in-person and virtual um, lessons uh, as well in a synchronous format. Uh, we are hoping to be able to flip the in-person core and encore classes after five weeks, uh, as it will be important to ensure in-person contact time with encore classes as well. We're starting off with those traditional uh, content areas of math, social studies, English, um, uh, and science, uh, and then with an elective to be determined uh, by the building levels. That's for middle school, high school. Uh, at the elementary school, we'll be able to be hitting all the content areas throughout the course of those four hours. Um, the first few weeks of school will not be entirely focused on instruction by any means or on assessing students of where they left off in March. We need to be able to provide a really good amount of time for students and staff to reconnect with, with one another. Building a sense of community and addressing the social emotional needs of students will be our number one priority. Um, I remember uh, two weeks ago when we, we were coming in for, maybe it was last week, our, our first time having a large group of, of staff and at the same time, for the first time uh, in, you know, really since March, it was kind of a challenge, you know, reconnecting with adults. There was a, there was a sense of awkwardness. How, how, do we, how do we act towards one another? You know, uh, if, if that's what our adults are feeling, imagine how uh, students are going to feel and, and you know, what is it like to be having social time with friends or being able to uh, interact uh, with students in that way. So we, we recognize that and that will be our part of our reopening plan of the first few weeks. Um, so at this point in time, there are some questions that have come up and I want, I want to address some of them uh, that were submitted prior to the presentation that are aligned to what I just shared. Biggest question that I have received uh, thus far is, will students have the option of attending completely virtual? Now, you're going to be hearing, again, that some districts are having an option of that they're going to uh, say, hey, we're going to give you the option of complete virtual. That'll be up to you to decide or not. Uh, please understand that, th that a number of those districts are really struggling with capacity and being able to bring students in. So they, they have to take measures to uh, be able to bring kids in and meet the social distancing. Again, we're small enough where we, you know, we're able to do it uh, with our facilities. So as of today, the guidance is clear about making sure there is a virtual option in place for those students that are not able to attend in person due to medical conditions with supporting doctor's note. Uh, the guidance also states that school districts are encouraged not to pursue educational neglect if students are engaging remotely. Um, so we will continue to use our district resources to help connect with us and support students. 
the nice thing though, the way that our instruction will be set up, and I mentioned uh, that we will have synchronous instruction. Um, when we have in-person instruction, we'll be recording those lessons and we'll be live streaming as, as well. So if we do have students that need to be home, they'll be able to zoom in um, and access that lesson in, in real time. And if there are situations where a student absolutely could not uh, attend at that synchronous time, then the recorded uh, lesson would be helpful in finding another time. But the expectation is that we would have structure and students uh, would be following the schedule. Uh, particularly also for those on the opposite days that I mentioned uh, for their encore classes, they would be logging in to that time where the class is meeting and um, have a, a synchronous part of that. Um, in the event that the governor's order changes and, and permits and directs that the opting model has to be in place, we will adjust accordingly and we'll notify families of that option. But again, the nice thing is I think we're going to be positioned pretty well uh, to, to be able to do that at this point. With that said, uh, I've had a number of phone calls and a number of conversations with parents um, that, uh, regarding homeschooling. Uh, you may have seen, well, and the question is, well, can I, can I withdraw my student from uh, being an enrolled student at Clyde Savannah and opt to homeschool my child? Uh, there are specific requirements uh, for homeschooling, uh, including a written letter of intent to homeschool uh, and to be able to provide the district with something called an individual home instruction plan and parents would have to submit that. Uh, if that is something that you are uh, seriously considering, I'm gonna encourage you to reach out to me uh, and give me a phone call and I can explain uh, that process in more detail and, may, and maybe be able to help your decision uh, if that's the route that you wanted to go. Uh, that deadline has been extended to August 1st. Typically, under normal circumstances, any homeschooled request would have to be in by July 15th. Um, and with that, there are some questions that have come up, uh, you know, so what about enrollment? What about state aid? If, if we have a ton of kids uh, and families that are saying, hey, we, you know, we want to we wanna opt to homeschool our child, uh, the question is, would our state aid be reduced if, if enrollment went down uh, due to a ton of kids uh, that were homeschooling? So understand that enrollment and other factors certainly affect state aid including a percentage of students receiving free and reduced meals. So at this point, it's really hard to tell specifically how it would be impacted because we don't know those numbers, but in any given year, we, we look at our enrollment, we look at all of our, those other factors and, and we adjust our budget accordingly um, to that. I'm gonna move on to uh, the other category of health and safety. Um, this obviously is a very big topic um, that we need to address. The New York State Department of Health and the New York State Education Department have very specific guidelines that schools have to follow, including daily health screenings and temperature checks for students, faculty, staff, and visitors to the building. Um, you're going to be hearing that some districts may be taking a different approach and, and may not be as cautious when it comes to social distancing in the classroom or on the bus. Specific to the bus, some districts are allowing anywhere from 20 to 30 students on a bus, sitting one per seat uh, with students wearing masks. Um, and I'll talk more about masks in a moment. So there is a lot of interpretation, different interpretation of, of how many kids can be on a bus with social distancing. Is it every other seat, one per seat? Is it every, uh, every seat, one per seat with masks? So the bottom line is, and the reality is what I can do or what I'm allowed to do is not necessarily, in my opinion, the most safe thing we can do for kids. And so with that said, we will be maintaining the additional safety measure of students sitting every other seat on the bus. Why is that? Well, kids, as you know, are going to be kids. We're not going to have uh, angel, every, every kid on the bus being an angel and, and having their, their bottoms on, on the seat and their hands uh, on their laps and that they're not gonna be moving out of their spot or they're not gonna be standing up or they're not gonna be peeking over the seat. Um, and the reality is kids are going to take off their masks. Um, they're going to be kids. We do not have enough staffing to have an aid on every bus to, to ensure that that's happening. Um, so, having that additional uh, seat in between, that's another safeguard. I do not want to compromise the six foot distancing on a bus if a kid takes off their mask and masks are required on the bus. Um, same thing in, in classrooms. You, you may hear that some schools are bringing in um, students and they can do three, you know, their interpretation of the six foot was, well, I can have three, you know, three feet apart as long as kids are going to have masks. Um, well, 
if the kid, if the student takes off a mask, you compromise the six feet apart. So we will be six feet apart. We also will be having students wear their masks and teachers at all times. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about specifically with masks. Um, I, I, you know, I, I've shared this with the staff. I've shared this with colleagues, and and, and I don't know if I've how much I've shared this at, 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 with the masses, but I, as a superintendent, you have all entrusted the the health and well-being of your children um, under my watch. And if I can put measures in place that are gonna make your children as safe as they can, even if they're a little bit uh, you know, more cautious than others, I am going to do that. I lost a child, I had a child pass away, and I never, ever want to have anyone feel that feeling of losing a child. I need to be able to sleep well at night knowing that I've done everything that I can to make sure that your children are safe. And I need to make sure that my staff are safe as well. So if I'm being extreme and having every other seat and we have to take a few additional bus runs to make that work and we need to adjust our start time at the elementary or we need to adjust our, our end time, I'm going to do it. I don't think there's gonna be anyone that's gonna argue saying, you know, Mike, uh, I wish you would be less safe for our kids. Uh, and, and really that's the reality of it and that's how I feel. So. That really was a non-negotiable when it comes to the health and, and well-being of your children. Um, so what does that look like? You know, how, what are the safeguards that we are going to have um, uh, in school? Well, first of all, our first line of defense, uh, particularly when it comes to health screening, has to start and will start at the house. All families will be required conduct, to conduct a health screening, including temperature checks, prior to sending your children to school. For those students that ride the bus, a secondary temperature check will, be, will occur before the students get on the bus. For those students that are walking or being driven to school, uh, temperature checks will occur prior to students being allowed entry to the building. Um, so again, that, that's a safeguard we're gonna have. It's gonna start, has to start at the house. Uh, it will be done prior to students getting on the bus. And again, if they're not riding the bus, it will be done prior to getting into the school, as well as staff. Staff will also have a health screening and temperature checks need to be uh, taken daily. Um, in addition, our district is working to install the digital thermal cameras. Uh, we're lucky enough to have that technology available. Um, so that will help uh, us be able to contact Trace. It's really pretty amazing technology. So if there was someone that was identified potentially uh, that, that had a fever that got in after our checks were in place, uh, then we would be able actually to follow that student and see who they may have been in contact with with the program uh, that we have. So pretty cool. Uh, technology that's helpful. Um, I also want to share with you that we are in the process of securing a community block grant, thanks to Mayor Jerry Freemail, to purchase uh, one digital thermometer for each family. You know, uh, we have, and during our planning sessions uh, with the community, um, it was brought up, well, you know, temperature checks are really important, but how do we know? Maybe not every family has a, a thermometer um, to, to be able to take those, those temperatures. So, uh, we were able to, uh, hopefully, able to secure that, and, and each family will be receiving one digital thermometer. Again, just to reinforce the importance of our first line of defense, definitely starts at the house. Masks. Uh, all students and staff will be required to wear a mask in the building and in class during instruction. Uh, frequent mask breaks will be provided uh, in a way that is developmentally appropriate. Uh, and that ensures the, so the six feet social distancing. Again, there was a lot of discussion on this topic with the planning committees. We all recognize that it's very difficult uh, for, to teach and, and to learn with a mask on for uh, an hours a day. Although we would prefer not to wear a mask, uh, even when six feet apart, it is the safer thing to do. Again, I, I, that argument I present is what happens if a student or when a student takes off their mask and they are within the six feet, uh, then we are, we're compromising the social distancing uh, assurance. And so I believe that we need that additional safeguard. Um, what happens if a student or staff member has symptoms or if tests positive for COVID? So that's another question that uh, certainly has come up and I know that many of you uh, have asked and, and we're thinking about. So again, very specific protocols are in place. Uh, you'll be able to read them in the written document that will be posted Friday. But generally speaking, the student or staff member will be evaluated by the school nurse They'll be isolated and then sent home uh, where there is that staff and student will have to contact their health provider. Uh, each building is required and we will have a room that serves as a, uh, an isolation room um, 
Fortunately, we are able to install, uh, at least right now at the middle school and high school building, uh, a negative pressure isolation room uh, as an additional safety measure. So many of you know that those are used in ICU units and, and once, when a person enters that room, it uh, basically uh, exhausts the, the air that's in there for more of a purification uh, measure. Uh, so that is, uh, it's nice that we're able to have that. Um, and again, we do have very specific protocol that the nurses uh, uh, will be implementing and all of our staff being trained on um, as well. Uh, PPE will be used and provided by the district in all cases that, that are needed. Uh, and again, if there are cases that are rising to a level of concern, um, all of our, our uh, situations will be communicated to the Department of Health and we will await from them what our next steps are. Uh, so, you know, each case it has to be treated individually, but there are many, many safeguards in place uh, and protocols that we follow. Again, they'll be shared with you in the written document that you'll see on the website this Friday. And then in addition to that, I give a, a number of questions about, you know, the cleaning. Uh, so in addition to the transportation uh, hurdle uh, that I think we're in a good place with, especially with the number of folks that are opting and are helping out to uh, transport their, their children, uh, thank you so much. That, that will be a huge help and that will, um, I think, be one step closer to us being able to do a door-to-door -door pickup. Uh, that is our goal as opposed to the centralized pickup, which may be an option uh, needed if the numbers uh, suggest so. Um, so disinfecting, cleaning, uh, all those protocols, again, we, uh, we are mandated by the state with the reopening plan to make sure we have in place, we will be meeting them. Um, there have been a number of people calling uh, me throughout the week and actually the last several weeks saying, Mike, you know, is there any way that we can help? Do you need community volunteers? Do you need folks to come in in any way to help the, you know, this, this plan work? We, we certainly support our children coming to school. We understand that you know, kids have been away from, from school for so long and the negative effects of that are outweighing you know, uh, them being home virtually. So absolutely, um, I will say that one of the, probably the biggest areas that we, we could use volunteers in at this point in time maybe help with our uh, touch point cleaning. Um, so if you're someone that is interested in coming in for whatever time you're able to volunteer, you know, we do, do have to be cognizant. We don't want too many visitors in the building at, at any one point in time to follow those guidelines, but with uh, proper screening and us providing proper P PPE, masks, uh, gowns, gloves, whatever, it could be helpful just to go around and, and perhaps, uh, you know, spray some touch points, to disinfect door handles or, or stair rails, or if we're able to use the lockers and we're hoping that we can, you know, that time that it might, that could be helpful in, in, in wiping off some of the uh, combination knobs and, and those types of things. Um, you know, remember that we're, we're going to have, you know, normal things that happen in a, in a, in a school year anyway. You know, kids are going to get sick. You know, you might have a, a bloody nose or you might have a, a student who's vomiting because they have a, a regular illness that's not COVID. So those are things that, you know, we have our, our crew in place, but if we do need to take them away from those things, any help that we can get, I think could really, could really be, um, it will be appreciated. So I'll, I'll just ask that if you are interested, uh, email the uh, reopening uh, Clyde Savannah email, or just give me a ring. I'd be happy to chat with you and, and see if that's something that we're, we're able to do. So I appreciate all of you reaching out and asking what can we do to help, uh, whether it be cleaning or even you know, temperature checks or, or whatever. Um, so that, that's a huge deal and I can't thank you uh, enough for that. So I know that this is a, um, a lot of information for me to share with you. Um, it, just know that this is our plan to, to, that, we are, that we're gonna start with. We had to come up with something, a starting point. We may hear from the governor on August 7th that New York State schools, you are not opening, you're all going virtual. And if that's the case, we have a plan in place and, and we will launch that plan and communicate that with families and, and we'll be ready to go. Um, again, we learned a lot from our, our online virtual learning experience this spring and we can make improvements and we'll continue. Governor may say, you know what, uh, we're gonna start October 1st uh, and, 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 and that might be something that we'll have to do. Uh, so just know that, that things are not going to be um, as usual. Uh, we have to be flexible. We have to be patient. 
Um, you know, there may be things that on paper look great and our planning committees worked hard, all of our brilliant minds, and, and we worked really hard to come up with this plan. And there may be things that, that, that we forgot. Um, and we will make those adjustments as quick as we can. And, and we're going to learn from this as we go. Again, it, it, we just have to be, we have to be patient. We have to be flexible. We have to work as a team as we always do. Um, and at the end of the day, just, just know that, you know, this has not been an easy task uh, for any of us. It has not been an easy task for parents. I know you all want to get, you know, uh, get your children back to school. Um, and there are, you know, challenges associated with that. I'm praying that this will not be long term. We will get through this. Um, but we really have an awesome, awesome, I think, plan in place considering uh, the time frame we have. And again, we're, we're a small school. We're able to do it and, and put these measures in place where I don't think some other schools can. Um, and, I, and, and we absolutely have the best school community, um, and second to none. And I, tr and I truly believe that. So at this point, again, a lot of, lot of questions uh, or a lot of information. Um, I'm going to go through our our question and answers. Uh, uh, there are some that have come up. Let me see if, uh, if I did not answer uh, some of them at this point in time. Um, so a question that comes up, will students still be able to attend the BOCES? Yes, uh, BOCES is still running. Um, there will be information that will be shared out from BOCES, but the plan is that our students will still be able to attend BOCES um, as I know it to be now. Uh, question was, how are you gonna split the, uh, the high school students? will be accelerated, will be last name, but will be grade level. I don't think we have a final answer on that. We're still looking at um, all the class lists and it may be through, you know, alphabetical, it could be, um, you know, taking other things into consideration. It maybe have to be BOCES, uh, depending if there's program and, and when students would come in. So uh, I don't have the specific answer to that right now, but please understand that your, the building level plans and, and building principles will have an opportunity to communicate out to their specific uh, uh, parents and families of what their plan is that may be done in a, uh, a, a setting like this, a, a virtual um, or a town hall setting, but um, more information to come on that as well. Um, you have, you, again, you have some questions uh, that are coming up. What about, what about our, uh, our, our, our students that are most at risk? Because we're going to have those students that are that have medical uh, conditions and that are more medically fragile than others. Um, you know, you, you have to really think about that and, and, and you know, we're gonna put this, these plans in place and if you're comfortable with that, then you know, that's gotta be a choice for you and, and maybe you're, you know, to speak to your physician, uh, call your provider, call your pediatrician, say, hey, this, this is what our plan is, the school's plan, you know, what do you recommend, what do you recommend for us as, as parents moving forward? So please consult with your, your pediatricians if there are concerns uh, specific to any medically fragile or higher, higher risk students. Um, um, and uh, that's really the, some of the questions I have now. Uh, again, it, it's gonna be tough. Uh, a question comes up, you know, what, what do I do? I'm a parent that, that uh, I have to work early hours. I may be an essential worker that's working at a hospital. I may be somewhere that I, that I need to be at work or leaving at very early in the morning, well before students are gonna have to be here. You know, I, I don't have that specific answer for all of those unique uh, situations. Um, again, our goal was to get this information out of what our plan is as far in advance to families. So you can make those, you know, those adjustments uh, to daycare and, uh, again, it's not going to be perfect. I, I wish that w that things were the same, but it, it's you know there's going to be some um, some challenges for everyone. So I'm hoping that this plan does not have to change drastically, and that you're for your planning uh, that we're you're pretty consistent. And we can move forward. And again, unless our governor says, "Hey, school, we're not going in person um, at all." Um, and then uh, another question: uh, Are you planning on the four four hour schedule? for elementary school being Monday through far Friday on the hybrid model. So as of right now, uh, we're starting out with the Monday through Friday uh, in-person shortened day schedule at the elementary school. Uh, if we feel like we need to pivot from that, um, you know, we're gonna, we'll have an opportunity to assess. Uh, and if we meet, need to make adjustments, we will. But again, this is the plan that we, we have to start out with. Uh, and then we will um, go forward. Great question. You know. Uh, 
is it, with a school day being shortened, is the curriculum going to be going to be shortened? Well, I think it's safe to say that the amount of time that we would normally have to to get through our our curriculum, we're going to be uh, under the gun to get it done, you know, sooner. However, the district spent, um, you know, starting the process in the spring of working on our prioritized curriculum, and uh, we spent a number of professional development days at the end of the school year recognizing that very question, you know, if we're going back to school, first of all, how do we catch up the kids, right? So a lot of us, you know, we got through March through June. Uh, was it the most amazing, in, you know, virtual experience? No. Are there going to be kids who uh, that regress a little bit or miss some of the content due to the nature of it? I think that is absolutely fair to say. So we uh, have looked at what is the absolute prioritized curriculum that we have in every grade level. If I'm a teacher in third grade, I'm going to know what the prioritized curriculum was in second grade. I know what my prioritized curriculum is in third grade. I'm going to try to accelerate as much as I can to get kids caught up. Um, so yes, the question is, uh, we understand that, we recognize that, and we have measures in place to, to catch those, those kids up. Um, you know, wonderful question that we, uh, that we ran into uh, at, at, in the four hours that we had to plan initially with the closure. Um, will kids have you know, are there, will kids have internet or have access to the wireless one-to-one uh, -one devices uh, or the Khajiits uh, provided uh, if we don't get service at our house? There are a number of families that just do, do not get service, lines run to their house. Uh, we will continue to survey our, our families. Uh, the survey the, that we sent home does have a question uh, pertaining to technology and if, you know, if you are still in need of a a uh, hotspot that Khajiits at the district will provide, please let us know. Um, so yes, we recognize that. Uh, I think the, the providers uh, have responded uh, to families' needs and are getting better at providing those lines into those more remote areas. So please reach out to us uh, and we will get you those hotspots uh, uh, if needed. Um, we wish we would have had those uh, right off the bat, but it took a little bit of time, but we, we did get them to, mo to almost every parent, I think every parent that requested it. Uh, great question, I, I appreciate you asking that. Um, so there are some other questions that come up. Uh, I'm not gonna really get into the specific details of specific personnel matters and, and, and what we're doing with staff. Uh, you know, they, we do have procedures with, uh, for our staff that, if, if, that they do have questions that they, they'll reach out to their supervisors or district office uh, regarding um, any of the work related concerns that that may have but I just I just can't get into personnel matters or, of what we would do uh, with that at this point in time and I appreciate your understanding of that um, attendance you know that the the, the uh, state is uh, requiring that we have a an attendance protocol in place it will be much easier to uh, do that when you know if our if our learning is synchronous and they are able to zoom in during a particular period, it'll be much easier to, to do that. Uh, what happens if you're more asynchronous? How do you uh, assure attendance? We're gonna be working those details out, but that is something we have to do and, and we're gonna you know, try to fine tune to meet those requirements of the state. Again, uh, I, I appreciate these questions about what about students? Uh, you know, there, there is a, a question here that, that is identifying, what about special needs students that are not gonna keep on their masks? You know, whether it be a special, net, uh, special needs student or any student for that matter, students are going to take off their masks. Uh, they are going to be, uh, they're gonna be kids. Uh, and, you know, I'm, all, I'm, visual, I'm visualizing, you know, a kindergarten or first grade, are they gonna be using slingshots? Are they gonna be, you know, pulling the mask down and up. I'm guilty of that too. It's been really an adjustment and it's gonna take a lot of um, a proactive, um, you know, teaching of and reminding of the mask wearing and, um, you know, clear expectations and help from, from all of you. And, and I, want, I thank you all in advance uh, for reinforcing with your children. You have to keep those masks on. You have to keep those masks on. It's not gonna be easy at first. Um, it, and again, that's why I'm doing the six foot distancing in every class in, in the event that someone does take off their masks, we have that extra safeguard. Um, but you're also gonna get kids that are, um, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna test the waters. They're going to, you know, 
it's not uncommon for middle or, school or high school kids developmentally to be testing authority and, and who are you to tell me to wear a mask? I'm gonna take my mask off. Well, yeah, like I said, we will be proactive. We will communicate our expectations very clearly early on and uh, we'll, we'll employ our proactive measures and interventions as needed. But I will tell you that when it comes to student safety and if there is malicious intent or, or insubordination when it comes to mask wearing, we will employ our disciplinary measures as, as we uh, see fit. Great question, I appreciate that. Uh, another great question that comes up, uh, you know, how is grading going to work? We, you know, we really were put on the spot um, this, this spring and, you know, how, how are kids going to be graded? We went to a pass fail. Uh, we went from a numeric grading for the first two quarters. Everything was fine and dandy. And then how do we, how do we grade when, when not, number one, not all students have the same, they're the same equity. You know, we had a lot of students who didn't have internet access. How can we expect students to be able to uh, all be the same uh, and when, when, the, when the playing field was not level? Uh, so we are, we've looked very carefully at that and we're gonna continue to uh, have our committees look at uh, how, can we best, how can we best assess students and assure that they are meeting, meeting the standards. Um, so when we think of traditional grading, I think that that idea of traditional grading was kind of out the door this, this past March. So how do we get feedback? Uh, how, you know, how do we continue to um, support those students that are, that are learning at, their, uh, at a different rate and on their own time? So on, on one hand, uh, this, this change in the landscape of education has, you know, I think has really caused, uh, uh, folks to think differently uh, from our traditional education for the really, and I share this, like the last 172 years, we've been doing the same thing. And, and we've always said, you know, what if we didn't have the seat time? Or what if we didn't have state assessments? Or what if we could allow kids to learn at their own rate and not be under the gun to pass a state assessment? And what if we didn't assign, you know, or reduce a kid to a number or reduce a teacher to a, a number on a state assessment? So um, in, in one hand, uh, this has been a change and I think we're gonna see some positive things. Unfortunately, we're under the umbrella of the health and safety of the pandemic issue. So I wish we didn't have that, but we could be doing some really, uh, really amazing things uh, as a result of, of this. So uh, I'm, I'm keeping optimistic. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I don't want to forget that we have the reality here too, and, and we're going to still have state mandates as of right now. And, and I'm, I'm hoping that the Regents is going to lift some of our requirements for seat time, the calendar, uh, which is my next thing um, that you should be aware of. Um, the academic calendar has a start date for students of September 8th. Um, that is our plan right now to look at that first week. We may adjust that uh, and communicate to families. It might be a student start date of September 9th. Uh, we may need and probably will need time with our staff to go over this plan in person. So keep an eye out for a change in calendar. If the governor um, says, you know, we're, we're not lifting the 180 days requirement for in-person instruction or instructional days, uh, just like this past year, we had, a, we had to have school during the April break. I'm hoping that's not the case. I hope that we don't have to adjust our, our vacation schedule, but full transparency if, you know, we're going to be at the mercy of the governor and what happens with the calendar. And I will, as always, as I have done, uh, communicate out uh, quickly. Uh, as soon as I get information for you, you'll be the first to know it. Um, and, and, and with that said, too, uh, I, I know that there were a lot of, a lot of districts that were, that were, uh, putting their plans out on, on the website. There are already some that are on there. You may have even seen news channels that were posting or talking about plans, but I have had not, number one, I didn't have the opportunity to, to chat with staff. So I did that on Monday. So they're aware of the plan. Uh, I certainly was not gonna provide the press with a, with a plan before I, before I spoke to our community. Um, I'm responsible to you as a community before I am to the press, so I, I, I'm just going to say that uh, unfortunately I was not was not um, uh, going to provide our our press with uh, our press with our plan before I shared it with our community. So um, again, it's just the way that I operate. It might be different than other districts. So be it. Uh, great question. Will class sizes be normal or smaller? 
Um, class sizes will be half the size uh, at the middle school and high school. At the elementary, they will also be uh, accommodating six feet apart, so they will be much smaller. Um, again, it'll depend on the size of the class, but however many we're able to fit six feet apart, we will do at the, at the middle school, high school, it looks like we're able to get anywhere from nine uh, to some cases, 12 students. Uh, again, six feet apart wearing masks. Um, so it, 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 our plan really is dictated by our facilities uh, and again, tran transportation as well. Um, uh, how will pre-K uh, students uh, be adjusted for all the first year students? You know, I, I'm really glad this, this was brought up and, and I have, uh, I just had this conversation with my sister. She's a, she's a first grade teacher on Long Island. Um, and and she's taught, she taught kindergarten for a number of years and my niece is, or my nephew, sorry, is going into kindergarten for the first time. And, uh, uh, you know, full transparency on this, what we, our schema and what our, what our vision of what a normal classroom would be and experience for kindergarten kids, you know, we're going to try to do the best we can to make it uh, as, um, as fun, you know, you want you always want school to be fun, but our first experience with those kids, uh, being able to, to interact with students, the playful learning, to share blocks, to share, you know, close to each other, and you're going to learn by the interaction and, and those social things that are so important uh, developmentally for kids as, as they go up through the grade levels, as they you know, become more independent, but that, that the group work and that the social learning is, is so important, but no, it's, gonna, it, it's not going to be the same. They're going to be socially distanced. They, they may be, you know, in a seat longer than that we'd like them to be, um, you know, where they may not be able to play blocks uh, with, with their friend and they can only use individual blocks and we're going to have to clean the blocks in between each use or, or have measures to, you know, to disinfect. So uh, it, it's sad when I, when I think of those, you know, those measures. I also, I also worry about, and I've had a number of conversations, okay, we're having kids wear the mask. We'll do the mask breaks. We're gonna do a, a lot of them, more so obviously for our younger kids. Um, and, but what about the teaching? You know, uh, how do you, I go back to how do you learn? How do you instruct for our youngest kids? Like early literacy, when kids are learning how to read, uh, you know, a lot of it's that nonverbal communication. It's those facial expressions that are, that are having, whether you're sounding out letter sounds. Um, you know, those are really, really important. And how, how, does that, how does that occur when you're wearing a mask? So we, we did order a uh, plenty, uh, a good number of the masks that have the, the cutout clear part for that reason. Uh, for our most uh, needy kids for, you know, that, are, that are needing additional support that might be uh, students with uh, special needs, we will have other uh, um, uh, measures to take that, to help support that. So, you know, these are things that, uh, like I said, don't, don't think that it's gonna be business as usual, we will do everything we can to make it as fun and as, as uh, social as we can, but we have to keep our, you know, safety first. Um, just, to, just to clarify one more time, uh, high schoolers, question, so are they going for the normal school day hours? School day hours will be 7.48 to 2.06. Uh, that is our starting point. Again, we'll adjust that first week, see how, bus, how transportation is working out, but our goal is to start school at 7.48 for middle school, high school and they will dismiss at 206. We are going to need time for our staff to be able to plan. Um, and we will have the end of the day planning for that. Again, going back to the four core and the one encore class, it'll be five 60 minute blocks, having uh, time for staff to plan. That was uh, all of our surveys. It, it, it is just absolutely needed for all our staff to have time to be able to do this while they are supporting kids in person and uh, as much remotely as they, uh, they need to do. Uh, great question. My masks get dirty or damaged during the school day. Will there be masks available? Yes, district has uh, Mr. Mochin, uh, Jeff Mocha, Director of Facilities, has ordered like th it's thousands and thousands of masks that we have. Uh, so we will have plenty. We'll have plenty for any student that doesn't have one. If they get on the bus without a mask, we'll give them a mask. If they get, you know, they, they lose their mask during a day or it gets dirty or falls off, we're going to have a mask. Um, we will have plenty, uh, plenty of masks for uh, students and, and plenty of PPE for all the situations that, that we need. If we have individuals that want additional, uh, PPE, we will be able to provide them for, for them to feel more comfortable um, uh, in school as well. 
Yeah, going back to that question, um, again, how, how safe is it, uh, and I mentioned this, to have extra people, volunteers coming in to help. Um, again, my, we don't wanna have too many coming in. We're gonna have you know, uh, some folks that will wanna volunteer. They will go through the same uh, screening procedures, uh, health check screening and what have you. So we'll be cognizant of that. I'm not gonna have you know, 50 people coming in a, at any given day, uh, but even having five additional people may be very helpful uh, for that. So thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that. It's something that we definitely uh, have, think, uh, have thought of. Um, uh, some other questions. What about you? What about phys ed uh, or band? What is that going to look like in, in this plan? So again, going back to um, the elementary school, we're going to be able to uh, have all of our content areas, uh, teachers working with students and including our uh, instruction or our encores, band cores, phys ed, those types of things. It's a little bit more challenging at the middle school and high school. However, like I mentioned, we're gonna start off with the first five weeks of our four core periods, math, science, English, social studies, and an encore. Again, that's gonna be specific to middle school and high school, what their, their schedule's looking like. Um, most of our electives or encores uh, to start off are going to be, uh, going to be um, uh, virtual. I can tell you that middle school, uh, middle school right now, we'll be having our performance ensembles, band and choir as the fifth, uh, fifth block. Um, again, I, I don't want to, and, and it's hard to say that, and I don't want anyone to ever think that because we are starting off with our core, traditional core subject areas that our electives and encore are not as equally as important, absolutely are. Um, but we, we need to start it with a starting point. I think we're going to be able to make, make this work, especially with flip-flopping uh, as we get into it. So uh, we recognize the importance of, of every content area and uh, we will work to make sure that we have connections with our teachers and, our, and those students in all those um, uh, settings. Okay, a lot of, uh, a lot of questions, similar questions that I think we've answered. Um, Uh, so I, I, I don't have, so the question was, will we have, will we know the schedules for high school and, uh, and, and teachers' names for elementary? Uh, we are still working on that. Um, things, you know, we do, we are adjusting, it seems like, on, on, a, day, on a daily basis at some times. Uh, staffing, we do have some changes that are happening, some, uh, some resignations or folks moving on to other districts and getting some new folks. So I don't have an answer for you at this point in time. I will defer you to reaching out to your building principals to see if they have a better idea of where they are in that process at this point. Um, I'm gonna say that that maybe not right at this juncture, but sooner than later, uh, for sure. Um, what about Regents? Uh, who knows about the Regents? You know, they were canceled this year. My gut instinct, uh, because there's going to be so many different um, structures that, that school districts are doing, some are not going to be able to bring kids in in person, some are going to be doing all virtual, some uh, are not going to be able to, I mean, the equity is going to be all over the place. I can't imagine, and again, I, I may be wrong, and, and the regents will, will, will tell us when they tell us, I can't imagine that regents is are going to happen this year due to the continued uh, inequities of all of our plans. Um, I may be wrong, uh, if, but if I am wrong, uh, we'll be able to meet our 180 minutes uh, that we need to uh, by law per week uh, with our schedule that we have in place. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Time will tell, time will tell with our state uh, three through eight testing uh, as well. Again, I, I just feel like how can you have state assessments in and be standardized across New York State uh, and, and evaluate and hold schools accountable when every school district is gonna be different and having their own, their unique needs. And I just don't see it happening. Um, we'll see, and, and maybe the, this is the catalyst and the push to say, are, are, are the state assessments really um, you know, need to be staying around? I, I think we can hold kids to high standards. I think we can, yeah. Uh, set our standards very high, high, but maybe the method in which the state is uh, having us do it might be something to uh, for further discussion down the road. But we will follow all the guidelines and, and uh, be in compliance with New York State Education uh, Department requirements. 
Uh, some questions again, how much time will each teacher have or if the teachers are rotating different classrooms? I'm gonna, I'm going to hold off on that. You will be receiving from your specific buildings what that schedule will look like, um, specific to um, elementary, middle school, and high school. So that information, please look out for that and that will be forthcoming. Uh, question again, go just going back to the schedule uh, for middle school, high school, will the, what will it look like every other day? Will it be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Uh, it may be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then Tuesday, Thursday of the following week. Yeah, so it would, just, it would be alternating. Um, and, and again, that's how we're starting off. Uh, we, will, we will assess where we are in the first few weeks of school. If we even are in school, uh, we'll, we'll see what the governor says, and, and then we'll adjust from there. Great question with uh, lockers. So will students have lockers or will they be using their book bags? Uh, the guidance uh, clearly um, is uh, stating that if you can limit locker usage, um, try to do so. Um, if you can assign lockers in a way that will uh, keep kids apart when they're using them, try to do so. Uh, so I know that Dr. Pollock and Mrs. Kelly are looking at locker assignments and. Uh, trying to minimize the amount of time that students would be, excuse me, at a locker. Students will have, still have their uh, Chromebooks uh, as part of their instruction, but we recognize that we're going to need paper and pen and, you know, pencil and, and material. So uh, those are things that uh, individual teachers and building administration will, will, um, uh, will put measures in place to, to be able to do that. So good question. Uh, appreciate the question about sports. I've gotten a lot of phone calls over the over the last month or so about when will sports start up. Uh, New York State Education Department is clear that as of as of today that we will not have uh, fall sports in place. Uh, we are anxiously awaiting what the plan moving forward will look like. Uh, they have talked about um, you know looking at the seasons and, and and flipping seasons and possibly having football in the spring. Looking at our less uh, less uh, risky sports uh, for social distancing. So our athletic director, Mr. Lang, is uh, uh, on top of that. He will, you know, he, he is uh, attending meetings regularly and um, he will uh, continue to provide our district with the most up-to-date information. So our hope is that everything gets back to normal, um, including all of our extracurriculars and our interscholastic uh, uh, program. Uh, Clyde Savannah certainly has a long-standing history of, of, of excellence in, in, uh, in our athletic program. Um, I'm hoping that we, you know, we, we get back to normal so we can, so we can continue that. Um, but again, I, 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 can't, I can't stress enough and, and thank uh, all of you for that flexibility and our students really for all of our athletes that have, have adjusted to a, you know, a remote way of, of keeping up uh, with your skills and with skills and um, practices and, and conditioning. And uh, so, you know, that, that's something that we, we need to get back certainly as sooner and later if we can. Uh, some questions regarding uh, students with disabilities uh, following their IEPs, all of our IEP, you know, if you have a child that um, is, has an IEP, all of the IEP um, mandates will be met and those services. So if you have any specific questions uh, to, to the IEP uh, and their individual education plan, please contact um, uh, Chris Nickel, our director of special education. Um, this has come up a number of times. I've had a few phone calls. Uh, Mr. Hayden, will parents be able to attend their, their pre-K kids for the first day? Um, unfortunately, uh, the answer to that uh, is no. Uh, we do need to limit um, the number of people. I know I, got, I can talk about the volunteers, but we can't have all those parents coming in. Um, so at this juncture right now, I, I will say that that is not um, possible. Um, I, I wish we could could say otherwise, but unfortunately, no. Lunches in the classrooms. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad this has come up. 
food service, we, we have very specific protocols, again, that New York State is requiring us to uh, implement when it comes to uh, food and sanitation and disinfecting all that. Elementary students will be eating breakfast in their classrooms as well as lunch. Um, they will be individually packaged to meals, uh, again, meeting of the guidelines from the state. Um, at the middle school and high school, students will be eating in their classrooms. They'll be a, a pick up their breakfast on the way in and be able to eat in their classrooms. We were able to continue to use our library uh, for our lunch uh, for at middle school, high school, um, based on the fact that we, we can keep kids six feet apart and then be able to disinfect after the, uh, and sanitize after that use. There may be some classes that we will have kids uh, eat in, but again, we were able to do it and nice job to Mrs. Kelly and Dr. Pollock for, uh, for looking at that and the facility usage is on there. So that, that was um, certainly taken into consideration. Questions about kindergarten screening, uh, please reach out to Mrs. Lum uh, regarding kindergarten screening and what that uh, schedule looks like and what's required. Uh, for our face shields, you are okay to use instead of masks? Nope, again, we are requiring that uh, uh, face coverings uh, face masks um, are required. There may, again, there may be some medical situations supported by doctor's notes that we left to look at an alternative uh, protective measure, and that may include the face shield and the social distancing of six feet apart. Um, so if you have specific questions of that, uh, you could certainly reach out to me and our uh, school nurses. Uh, so the question was, if, if we write a letter of intent by August 1st, if you, you know, if you are choosing a, the, to the homeschool um, um, option, and then if the guidelines change and require online only option, will, will we still be able to have that option or will we be too late? We can certainly in a, a adjust. Um, it's not, not too late to, to re-enroll the student um, in uh, a, either in-person or um, you know, remote if, it gets, if we're able to do that. Pick up and drop off and all of those logistics, you will be hearing more specifics uh, from the building principals uh, and on our district uh, website to come. Uh, we will, again, be communicating all of, of the unique logistics uh, for your planning uh, purposes. And uh, going back to some food questions, can students bring food from home? That has gone back and forth uh, with the state. Uh, at this point in time, we are allowing that students bring food from home. If that changes, uh, Mrs. Ravello, our Director of Food Service, who has absolutely been incredible, as you all know, and her food staff um, in, in, from March on um, with, with everything that we've been able to support the community, uh, she is amazing and is up to date on all of the guidance and will let me know ASAP if that changes and we will let that know um, to you as well. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, at this point in time, uh, for the time we have, the meeting is going to conclude. I, I encourage you still to access the school reopening at clydesavannah.org if you have any specific questions that may, that were not answered specifically here today on a general sense. Uh, again, please know that you will be receiving additional information from the buildings uh, as we move closer to the start of school. Um, I, again, I can't thank you enough. For, for everything that you have done for the school district, for your, for your support, for your flexibility, your just knowing that things are not, not the same right now, but we all hope we're gonna get back to a, a normal, normal state at, at some point. We have the absolute best community. Uh, again, I thank all of you for wanting to volunteer and, and, and uh, you know, it does take a village. Uh, that expression is, is so true for, for Clyde Savannah. We've always rallied together. We've always made it work. Uh, by working together and together we are stronger. Um, so I, I really appreciate everything that you have done. If there are any of uh, uh, anyone that asks um, can they access or how the meeting go, let them know that the meeting has been recorded. We will, uh, we will post a link for anyone that wants to, to uh, watch this uh, presentation again uh, or wants to share it with someone. So, so just know that that is still there. And again, reach out, uh, email me, email the school reopening. Give me a, a phone call. I'll be happy to, to uh, answer any questions. So um, appreciate it. Have a wonderful night. Stay safe, and we'll be in touch.